They were loud, smoky, and built like tanks. And for decades, Detroit diesel engines ruled the water. But the marine world didn't just move on, it completely evolved. Today, we're digging into why holding onto these legends might be the worst decision a captain can make, plus revealing the next generation of technology that's replacing them from marine propulsion. Detroit Diesel's marine empire was built on a simple philosophy. Create engines so tough they could handle anything the ocean could throw at them. From the smallest auxiliary units to massive propulsion plants, Detroit had a two-stroke solution for every marine application, and the confidence to believe bigger was always better. The Series 53, introduced in 1957, was Detroit's answer to space-constrained marine applications. These compact engines found their niche in auxiliary marine units where every square inch of engine room space mattered. Small ferries relied on the 53 series for propulsion when larger engines wouldn't fit. While bigger vessels used them for backup power systems that kept critical operations running. The real genius of the Series 53 was its versatility in those tight spaces. Commercial fishing boats used these engines to power refrigeration systems, pumps, and deck machinery that kept their operations running smoothly. But even Detroit's smallest marine engine carried the DNA of systemic complexity that plagued the entire family. The unit injector system, which enabled straightforward field repairs, also required periodic individual timing adjustments, especially in demanding marine environments. Mechanical governor systems could be sensitive to fuel contamination, a frequent issue on the water, leading to erratic performance if not meticulously maintained. Keeping these systems running optimally meant that routine inspection and adjustment were essential, turning reliability into a hands-on skill set. Today, these auxiliary applications have been revolutionized by hybrid generators, battery-supported systems, and efficient auxiliary diesels that provide the same capabilities with better fuel efficiency and reduced emissions. Modern power management systems can optimize energy use while reducing noise and environmental impact, capabilities that Detroit's mechanical systems never offered. If any engine defined Detroit Diesel's marine dominance, it was the Series 71. Introduced in 1938 and adapted for marine use by 1945, the 671 and 8V71 became the workhorses of mid-century marine propulsion, earning their reputation in the crucible of World War II. The 671 powered thousands of LCVP landing craft that carried Allied troops onto hostile beaches, with twin 671s providing propulsion, while smaller Detroit engines ran winches and generators. These engines ran in saltwater spray, sand, and combat conditions that would destroy lesser power plants, creating a legend that lasted decades. After the war, commercial fishing fleets inherited this military-proven technology with enthusiasm. The 671 became the backbone of mid-to-large fishing fleets, powering everything from Pacific Coast salmon boats to Gulf Coast shrimpers. The engine's 165 to 238 horsepower was perfectly matched to commercial fishing operations, while the unit injector system meant repairs could be made at sea with basic tools. Tugboat operators embraced the 8V71 for harbor work, using these engines not just for propulsion but to power hydraulic systems for winches and fire pumps. The engine's ability to handle continuous operation at varying loads made it seem perfect for the stop-and-go nature of tugboat operations, where massive torque was needed to move barges and position vessels. The Series 71 also became foundational in early sport fishing boats. The 671 became a staple in boats like the Bertram 31, known for its rugged reliability. Charter boat captains appreciated the engine's dependability and the fact that any marine mechanic could work on it, crucial when going offshore. But the characteristics that made the Series 71 central to maritime operations 
also planted the seeds of its obsolescence. The roots blower's whine that announced serious power became noise pollution that marinas could no longer tolerate. The visible exhaust smoke that signaled a healthy two-stroke became an environmental liability as ports implemented air quality standards. Today, these applications have moved to modern four-stroke diesels from CAT, Volvo Penta, and Cummins that prioritize fuel economy and reliability. Commercial fishing vessels now use engines that consume 20 to 30 percent less fuel than Detroit engines, directly improving profitability in an industry where fuel costs often determine success or failure. Introduced in 1974, the Series 92 represented Detroit's response to escalating marine power needs, but it also marked the beginning of the end for practical two-stroke marine engines. These bigger, louder engines delivered more power, but they also amplified every problem that had been manageable in smaller Detroit engines. Heavier tugs adopted the 12V92 for its impressive torque output, with some operations using massive 16 V149 engines for the most demanding applications. These engines provided the raw power needed to move large vessels and handle fire suppression systems, but operators quickly discovered the exponentially higher fuel consumption. Offshore support vessels serving oil rigs use Series 92 engines for their ability to handle multiple loads simultaneously, powering not just propulsion, but also deck machinery, dynamic positioning systems, and crew accommodations. The harsh offshore environment exposed every weakness in Detroit's design, from saltwater corrosion to heat exchanger failures. Larger fishing boats embraced the Series 92 for its power, but the increased fuel costs began eating into profit margins that were already razor thin. Factory ships used these engines not just for propulsion, but to power onboard processing equipment and refrigeration systems, creating complex installations that were expensive to maintain. The Series 92 also revealed how Detroit's scaling approach created new problems. The larger engines generated more heat, required bigger cooling systems, and produced more vibration that stressed vessel hulls and drivetrains. What worked in smaller engines became problematic when multiplied across larger configurations. Modern tugboats now use Caterpillar, Cummins, or hybrid LNG-capable four-stroke diesels that provide superior torque characteristics while meeting emission standards. The shift from brute force to smarter, cleaner tug propulsion has revolutionized harbor operations, allowing vessels to operate more quietly in noise-sensitive areas while maintaining the power needed for demanding work. The Series 110, introduced in 1945, represented Detroit Diesel's attempt at more power per pound, but it ultimately demonstrated why incremental improvements couldn't overcome fundamental design limitations. Used in tugs, fishing vessels, and early yachts, the 110 series promised better power-to-weight ratios than the Series 71. Early yacht builders experimented with the Series 110, particularly in sport fishing applications where power mattered more than refinement. The 6110 produced between 220 and 275 horsepower, initially making it attractive for offshore sport fishing boats that needed more power than a 671 could provide. However, pleasure boat owners quickly discovered that the engine's two-stroke characteristics were poorly suited to recreational use. The noise, vibration, and smoke that commercial operators tolerated became deal-breakers for yacht owners who valued comfort and quiet operation. Early trawlers and sport fishing boats that used Series 110 engines had to accept these compromises. But the market was already moving toward more refined alternatives. The Series 110's position between the more popular Series 71 and 92 meant it never developed the parts availability or service network of its siblings. This created support problems that became more severe as the engines aged and required more frequent maintenance. Today's yachts and pleasure craft use the more efficient, electronically controlled four-strokes or hybrid electric drives that provide superior power while eliminating the noise, vibration, and emissions that made Detroit engines unsuitable for luxury applications. Modern yacht owners expect to be able to have conversations while underway.
something that was impossible with Detroit's screaming two-strokes. At the peak of Detroit, Diesel's Marine Reach sat the Series 149. Introduced in 1965 for applications demanding maximum power, regardless of cost or consequence. These massive engines powered offshore rigs, marine supply boats, deep-sea tugs, and very large commercial fishing vessels, where raw power was everything and efficiency was less important. Deep-sea tugs used twin 12V149s to tow oil rigs, while supply boats relied on these engines to maintain position in rough seas while servicing offshore platforms. The raw power was undeniable. These engines could produce over 3,000 horsepower in their largest configurations. But so was the massive fuel consumption and environmental impact. Factory ships use Series 149 engines not just for propulsion, but to power onboard processing equipment, refrigeration systems, and crew accommodations. The engine's ability to handle those loads simultaneously made it seem ideal for these complex vessels, but the maintenance requirements were overwhelming. Offshore drilling rigs used Series 149 engines for both propulsion and power generation, with engines running continuously for months at a time in harsh conditions. The 16V149 and 20V149 provided the massive power needed to position drilling platforms and operate drilling equipment, but the fuel consumption was astronomical. A 20V149 could consume over 200 gallons per hour at full power. The Series 149 represented the ultimate expression of Detroit's bigger is better philosophy, but it also embodied everything that made Detroit's marine engines unsustainable for the future. The massive size required specially designed engine rooms and reinforced mounting systems. Most critically, the environmental impact was becoming increasingly unacceptable as regulations tightened. Modern large commercial vessels and tugs now use intelligent cam shaftless engines from MAN and other manufacturers that monitor themselves continuously, adjusting operating parameters to maintain optimal performance while predicting maintenance needs. These engines deliver superior efficiency and reduced environmental impact while providing the power that demanding applications require. The decline of Detroit Diesel's marine empire was driven by converging forces that made these once mighty engines economically and environmentally unsustainable. The tightening emissions laws that we've discussed were just the beginning of a perfect storm that would sink Detroit's marine ambitions. Rising fuel costs hit marine operators with devastating impact. Commercial fishing vessels and tugboats operated on razor-thin margins, and fuel often represented their largest operating expense. The fuel blow-through inherent in two-stroke operation meant these engines literally burned money with every revolution, while the blower consumed power that wasn't available for propulsion. The technical difficulties of keeping two-strokes compliant went far beyond simple regulatory requirements. The scavenging process essential to two-stroke operation meant that some fuel inevitably passed through unburned, creating not just visible smoke but also hydrocarbon emissions that were impossible to eliminate without destroying engine performance. But the problems ran deeper than fuel and emissions. The saltwater environment attacked Detroit engines with particular vengeance. The complex casting of the Series 71 and 92 blocks created numerous crevices where salt could accumulate and cause galvanic corrosion. The individual cylinder heads that made repairs easier also created more potential leak points which were vulnerable to saltwater intrusion. Heat exchanger maintenance became a constant nightmare. The high heat rejection of two-stroke engines stressed cooling systems beyond their design limits causing frequent failures that could strand vessels far from port. Raw water cooling systems were particularly vulnerable, as marine growth and corrosion could block cooling passages and cause catastrophic overheating. The vibration characteristics of aging Detroit engines created problems that weren't apparent when they were new. The two-stroke firing pattern created vibrations that were transmitted through the drivetrain to propellers and reduction gears, causing premature wear and creating noise problems that were unacceptable in modern applications. Parts availability became increasingly problematic as production ended and the marine industry moved toward modern alternatives. 
marine-specific components like heat exchangers and raw water pumps became specialty items with limited availability and high costs. When these components failed, vessels could be stranded for extended periods. The marine industry's transition away from Detroit diesel represents a complete philosophical shift from brute force to intelligent engineering. Modern alternatives don't just replace Detroit's power, they surpass it while addressing every weakness that made the old engines obsolete. Modern four-stroke marine diesels from Caterpillar Cummins and Volvo Penta have systematically replaced Detroit engines across virtually every application. These engines offer advantages that go far beyond simple efficiency improvements. They represent a complete rethinking of what marine propulsion should be. Caterpillar's C32 marine engine produces up to 1,925 horsepower while weighing significantly less than comparable Detroit engines. The electronic controls optimize fuel delivery and timing continuously, delivering performance that mechanical systems cannot match. Commercial fishing vessels have embraced these engines for their superior fuel efficiency and extended service intervals. Tugboats have transitioned to Cummins QSK engines that provide the torque characteristics operators need while meeting current emission standards and offering better fuel economy. The electronic controls available on modern engines provide precise power management that improves operational efficiency in ways that mechanical engines never could. Today's luxury sport fishing yachts and super yachts favor propulsion packages from MTU, MAN, Caterpillar, and Cummins. These engines offer unmatched horsepower, modern fuel efficiency, quieter operation, and regulatory compliance. The contrast with smoking, roaring Detroit engines couldn't be more dramatic. Larger ferries, offshore supply vessels, and commercial cargo ships are increasingly adopting liquefied natural gas and dual-fuel engines that offer dramatically reduced emissions and lower fuel costs. These systems are in stark contrast to Detroit's environmental impact. Vertsala and MAN produce dual-fuel engines that can seamlessly switch between natural gas and marine diesel depending on availability and operating conditions. These engines produce a fraction of the emissions of Detroit's two-strokes, while delivering superior fuel efficiency and reliability. The most advanced marine engines now feature camshaftless valve actuation and intelligent control systems that monitor themselves continuously. MAN and other manufacturers produce engines that optimize performance in real time and predict maintenance needs offering something completely different than Detroit's mechanical philosophy. These engines can adjust their operation continuously to optimize fuel consumption and emissions, something that fixed timing mechanical systems cannot achieve. Large commercial vessels and modern tugs are adopting these advanced engines for their superior efficiency and reduced environmental impact. Experimental and research vessels are exploring even more advanced propulsion technologies, including opposed piston engines and hybrid electric systems. These cutting-edge technologies promise even greater efficiency and environmental benefits than current four-stroke engines. Hybrid systems combine diesel engines with electric motors and battery storage, providing silent operation for maneuvering while maintaining the range and power of diesel engines for high-speed operation. Government and high-efficiency research vessels are testing these advanced systems that represent the future of marine propulsion. The ugly truth about Detroit diesel in the marine world isn't that these engines were failures. It's that they've been surpassed so completely that continuing to use them represents poor judgment. The marine industry has moved beyond the limitations that Detroit's engineers accepted as inevitable, embracing technologies that work smarter rather than harder. The legendary reliability that made Detroit engines famous has been exceeded by modern alternatives that require less maintenance while delivering superior performance. Most damning of all, the marine applications where Detroit engines once excelled have abandoned them almost entirely, choosing modern alternatives that deliver better performance at lower cost. Did you work on these engines when they ruled the waterways? Share your stories about the Detroit diesels that powered America's maritime operations and tell us what you replace them with and why.